Today we'll try to go for a big one, the combined use of retinol with acids. As for all things skincare, we have so many myths, false allegations, fears, doubts, questions. So today's video tries to figure out how this marriage will end up, ever happily after or bitter and divorce. Oh. Hello again, skincare people. Friday today, so DH Traveler here with a new video. My name is Custodio, in case you don't know me. If it's the first time you come to the channel, very much welcome. Here, we always ask the question, what is that skin wanted before marketing got in the way. I've been working in the cosmetic industry for 30 years and the last 13, 14 years working in product development. There is probably one of the questions I hear more often coming from different uh, people, different sides, but the question is always the same. Can we ever use at the same time retinol and acids? Is it safe for the skin? Is it safe for retinol itself? Because that's one of the ideas is whether acids will break down and neutralize the action of retinol. If so, if okay to use together exactly how to best use it, are there any acids? Are the AHA better? The PHA? The BHA? Is there something also related to skin types? So let's try in one single video give simple straightforward answers. You know it's like uh, to eat an elephant, to how does the expression eat or swallow? I think it's to swallow an elephant, you have to break it in pieces and swallow piece by piece. So let's do that. Let's take the first piece, which could be exactly that doubt, whether uh, acids will neutralize, kill the action of retinol. This is one of those cases, and it's a very deep rooted, very common, and you find it here on YouTube, often this type of content, questioning uh, the safety to combine acids and retinol from the point of view of retinol. And this is one good example to understand this misunderstanding of extrapolating from rules, laws of formulation. So very often might be very well intended chemists who put forward this idea because yes, in terms of a formulation, you would not normally have high concentrations of both because retinol to be at perfect uh, bioavailability will not run on a finish formula with a too much acidic pH, but it is acidic pH. So retinol lives in acidic pH. Our skin is 5.5, that's already acidic, seven is neutral. So retinol will be happily under that level, but of course not shelf life, one year, two years as a glycolic acid, which is very happy to be stable in a formula with a final pH of 3.4 or something similar, or even in some case lower. So this means that when we extrapolate what goes for formulation, it makes little sense to think the same just because you layer it on your skin one after another, whatever you are layering, it's already fighting with your own skin's pH, it's facing your microbiome, there is sebum, there is everything that goes on which have variations throughout the day. So skin carries a balance, it's an equilibrium uh, over and around clock. It's not that mathematical idea that every time, every day, things are working exactly the same. So formulating with very low pH glycolic in one bottle for one year, two years sitting on a shelf, no professional chemist would ever do that. But to extrapolate and think that because you apply an AHA or a BHA and retinol at the same time, the retinol, be sure, will be resisting quite a lot that because anyway in the formulation you have buffers, you have uh, uh, film forming elements, you have dispersion, you might have slow release particles, cyclodextrins. There are so many technologies that it's a bit childish to think that just because that and that ingredient don't belong in a jar, they cannot live in the skin. So first one, out of the way, first chunk of the elephant, from the sake of the ingredient stability, you can use them together. Now we enter probably the most problematic areas because there is no one fit for all answer and it's a bit more nuanced. But overall, the question is, is it safe for skin to use 
retinol and acids at the same time. In many of the videos, I've used metaphors. If you are friends with the channel, you know that I like my metaphors because I think they help to understand things visually. So I always say that uh, acids, no matter which acids, are like cellular funerals. They deal with dead cells. What they do is shed off corneocytes. So dead skin cells on the surface, they unglue, they detach. So their action, when we say that AHA or BHA can speed up cellular turnover, it's from outside to inside because they really work much more on the surface than in the depth. Retinol is the opposite. Retinol is kicking baby cells, so it's not a funeral, it's the maternity. It's kicking up those cells to go up, but it's also strengthening and speeding up the production of collagen, so very healthy things happening at the bottom. So in my mind, acids and retinol actually belong together and should be used together if we are addressing visible signs of aging. I'm not talking about the preventive younger skin, I'm talking more about 50 years old, a more mature skin condition, I would never think to choose between AHA or retinol. So now the $1 million question, answer, is what's the right rhythm? And here we have to turn things back to you and really ask yourself what is your experience with either acids or retinol. Are you entirely new to both? Are you? Then the answer, totally different from everything I said so far, is no. You're not going to use retinol and acids at the same time. So, very clearly, everything I said so far, it's for a skin which is already acquainted at times to use either acids, retinol, to maybe separate them. And this is all good. This is absolutely fine that you can use either of the ingredients, alternate days, every second day, exactly as I always say, listening to your skin, having the feedback from your skin if there is some irritation. All of us who has uh, start using retinol know that there is a retinization period. There is a period that your skin will be less tolerant. So if you start diving on both at the same time, you are in a road for disaster. Okay, Custodio, let's work. Let's be practical. So you never used retinol or acids. You will start with the acids and after a few months, a few months, I'm saying three months, four months, you will introduce retinol maybe two nights in the week and those two nights will not use the acids. You are an exception. You need to start retinization the proper way and you cannot start on steroids. Another case, you're already acquainted to both acids and retinol, just that you use them alternate every other night. So question number one, is it not maybe the best? Maybe you should just stay the way it is if it works for you. If for some reason you are convinced, as I am in my case, that I needed to step up a little bit the game, I did my testing, and we will cover this in the end of the video, I came to the conclusion that for me, PHA, polyhydroxy acids layered at the same time as retinol actually work better than the usual salicylic or glycolic acid layered at the same time. In case of doubt, always better to alternate every other night, either the acid or the retinol. So another scenario, you have retinol every night, every night, every night, and never have used acids that much. You want to introduce acids, what you're gonna do is first use the same rule, just reverse. You will introduce acids, whatever they are, one, two nights in the week, and those nights, until further notice, you will not apply your retinol. So you interrupt retinol just those nights. If everything is smooth, again, give it a period, one week, two weeks, one month, two months, with that alternate, then you will do an experience to layer them. It is always possible to layer them depending on your skin tolerance. You need to listen to your skin. You need to believe that you understand your skin better than any brand who is saying, do this, do that. Our role, brand makers, should be to give you the right guidelines, evidence in terms of skin biology, not extrapolate too much chemistry rules 
to layering. Chemistry is about bottle life, the formula stability in the bottle, and not always the idea how they operate on the skin. A lot of misunderstandings, doubts, and certainty, they come from those extrapolations. So next question is, what type of acids, what type of retinol? Well, retinol I've been using throughout the video, the generic term, I should maybe have said retinoid, but I also don't want to step further to the prescription type of retinoids. I leave those that advises to the dermatologists because they are under prescription. So when I mention retinol, is retinol itself, uh, retinal or retinal dehyde, whatever you like, or differin, so whatever, it's sold over the counter. And the acids on the menu could be the AHA, normally the glycolic acid, lactic acid as the most common. You have all those tartaric, mandelics, etc. Some of them have their own interests. Me personally, I've always have formulated for Swiss line with glycolic acid, lactic acid, and those are the ones I think have the most evidence and the most interesting research behind them. They are for sure very geared towards anti-aging. Between the two, glycolic, lactic, if to marry with retinol, lactic acid being much more pro-moisturizing and more skin identical because it's the only AHA that occurs naturally in the skin, it gives you a little bit of a better platform. The glycolic acid layer at the same time, if the retinol is at a very high concentration, it can sometimes be overly sensitizing, but your skin will tell you yes or no. Then we think BHA, the salicylic acid, which is from all the acids, probably the most drying one, which is very well tolerated by some people, but more drying out for others, even though for all of them it's quite anti-inflammatory, so counterintuitively in cases of acne, also because it's oil soluble, so it penetrates deeper into the pores, it's better to unclog the pores. Very often retinoids are also used for uh, addressing problems of acne. That's how actually they enter the industry. But when we think anti-aging, I would say that maybe the most difficult to tolerate layering would be the salicylic acid and the retinol. Again, it's an individual answer. It's nothing about their formulation incompatibility, but they might turn to be too much drying. I use salicylic acid, I use retinol, I alternate them. Those two I don't layer, I layer lactic acid. And to conclude, the third generation, the polyhydroxy acids, those guys are from all the family because they are more engineered, they are the last generation, so they are normally gentler. I don't think they have the same power and penetration of a glycolic acid. They might not have the same penetration and anti-aging power as lactic acid or glycolic acid even more so, but they are more gentle. So from all acids, the ones I would really believe you can actually layer more often than not, it to be the polyhydroxy acids. So leave a comment below. I'll be very curious to hear whether you've been toying with these ideas of layering, using at the same time. Remember, wrapping up the whole thing, layering is possible. There is nothing against layering, only sensitivity in some cases. And if that's the case, your skin is telling you that she doesn't like it, it's not unsafe, it doesn't break retinol. Those are the myths I hope we have debunked and I'm always glad to hear comments below, suggestions for other topics. By the way, The H Traveler just started also to be more active on Instagram. If you are following the guy there, happy to know. If not, please check. There will be content which mirrors, but a lot of content which goes far beyond more personal than the content here. So hope to see you there and here. Next time, say no always, always to boring skincare. Retinol, AHA, many other ingredients always here in the channel. Please consider subscribing, like, share, do whatever you want.